Previously, we completed installing the second steel beam on the main level of our house that will support both the great span of the second floor joist and also the roof load. How do we get ourselves into this? It's you. It's you. <laughs> it's you. The remaining nine steel beams will go in the ceiling of the safe room, which means for now we can just focus on completing the second floor and attaching the addition to the existing A-frame house. Our local nursery was kind enough to give us some cuttings off of their skip laurel trees so that we could come home and test them on our livestock today. We know that they're deer resistant, but whether or not they're livestock resistant, like Leon and Dexter, that's yet to be determined. So we don't wanna buy them and then try to put them all along the back of the solar panels until we know for sure that the animals aren't gonna like these. Hey girl. Uh oh, that's not a good sign. Wait, she likes it? I mean, she keeps eating it. Oh, <laughs> uh, see, she might have just tried it out and then decided she actually doesn't like it. I think that's what happened. She gave it a shot. She's like, nah, it tastes awful. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Who's nah. up next? <laughs> Let's go, Dexter. Where are you at? <laughs> yeah, she's good. Hold on. Uh, okay. That's the third bite. <laughs> so she wants to like it, but she kind of doesn't. Not our thing, you know? They might damage them a little bit because they might walk. They'll, they'll go for it. They realize the grass tastes better. Perfect. She walked away, so that's a win. <laughs> Round two. Come on, Dad. Hey, Dexter. We got a treat for you. Got a treat, buddy. Come here. And see, see right there? He, I mean, you can't leave Leon out. He knows something's going on over here. Is Come it on. graham crackers? No, but he'll try it anyways. Come on, Lee. Who's up next? You're Dex. Let's go. You want to try it out? Come on, take a bite. No, doesn't like yep. it. Dexter. <laughs> it took the fly through it. <laughs> this is garbage. I know, Lee. That wasn't a nice trick, was it? Nobody <laughs> likes the tree, so that's a win for us. Bye, Leon. Bye, Thank Leon. you. See ya. Bye, Lee. I'd like to get started working on the floor joists going across the beam. Once we get to this section right here, we gotta stop and put another two by across there so we're gonna finish the floor joists up. And once we get done with this section, we have one section of floor joists left for the second floor. And once that's done, we're gonna start a subfloor on the second level. This time my plan is to push it up right there on top of that wall. I'm not going to attempt to squeeze through those studs. Okay. Really thick, girl. You know? The marks will be on your right side of the uh, joist. Uh, Alright, you got it? I'm good. I think about how heavy these are. Yeah. And then I remember the 600 blocks we have. And suddenly <laughs> this job doesn't seem that bad. It's not that nearly as bad. Not nearly as bad. <laughs> push it up, push it up, push, 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 push. Are we good? Here we go. Oh, yeah, you got it. That's good stuff, right? Yeah, that's good stuff. That's about it good. <sighs> yeah. On the exterior wall, we're keeping the floor joists an inch and a quarter in to account for the rim joist. Um, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Once the rim joist is installed, we're gonna nail it to the floor joist. Okay, grab the next one. This end of the floor joist is sticking out probably about three inches. That's not a big deal. These are the other floor joists that are gonna come from the A-frame side. They're gonna assist them next to each other. They're gonna tie in. But the ones behind me right here, we gotta cut those flush because we actually have a stairwell that's gonna get framed out around here. This whole entire area is gonna be open. So we gotta make sure our floor joists are cut to the proper length. This is our area right here. We're gonna make sure our floor joists stop flush with this wall right here in between these two posts. This entire area is gonna be open. This is gonna be the back door as it sits right now. We need to go up the stairs, around to the landing, and up to the second floor. So that's the area right there we gotta work with. What we need to do is measure from the interior wall right here to the exterior wall. And where that measurement is, we gotta subtract three inches. And that's the exact measurement. So there's no room for fluff, no room for error. It has to be exact. Got it, boss. Good, let's do this. <laughs> you got that mark? Right there, perfect. Exact? Exact. Are you sure? What's Engine, what's an inch and three quarter plus an inch and a quarter? That's not my job. Remember, I do the grunt work. Uh-oh. 
Whoa, half that point. Is, that's not an inch and three quarter. Oh, it's an inch and three quarter, girl. That's not an inch and three quarter. Yes, it is. That's exactly an inch and three quarter. My calculations are right. So I'll show you tens, ten, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that moon. It's huge. It sure is. It sounds like a good night to me for s'mores. For s'mores. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big moon. I know, that's what we just said. Gorgeous, right? Girl power. Girl power. Girl So this entire batch of floor joys obviously has to be cut, but we only have like four left to install until we reach the very end. So we'd like to try to get it done, even though it's obviously not ideal working conditions. It's a little dark. You got light, you got light, you know? Ready? Yep. Moon's out, getting cool, time for fire. You know, I think Ellie probably picked the perfect night for s'mores. Yes, she did. Better night this morning for her, though. <laughs> <laughs> S'mores, you like s'mores? This video is sponsored by AG1. First thing every morning, I head to the kitchen, I grab my AG1, I consider it the only right way to start my day. AG1 has 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, prebiotics, and adaptogens. It's basically a superfood complex that helps to fill in the gaps in our diet and keep our energy up throughout the day by just having one simple serving. Eight ounces of water, one scoop or travel packet, and we're good to go. We have no need to mess with a whole bunch of different supplements because we can get everything we need right here. It's the easiest way for us to invest in our health and support our energy, immunity, gut health, and digestion. A daily routine that's simple to throw together, easy to stick with, and tastes delicious. We are heading into our third year of drinking AG1 every single day. It's basically a lifestyle at this point. I just couldn't imagine starting my morning any differently. If you're interested in checking out AG1, go to our link in the description box below to get a year's supply of vitamin D and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. This is a game changer for supporting your immune system. AG1 provides your body with everything it needs for optimal performance every single day. Now let's get back to the build. So we are at the point now where we're actually ready to start tying the addition into the existing A-frame. And I think that we've ultimately decided after a lot of discussion that with the weather we've been having, it's probably the best approach to leave as much as we can to just protect the existing house. Eventually it's going to all come off because this entire section from this post down is going to be cut out. Anyways, so yes. it's going to come off. Be wide open. So with that said, let the demo begin. <laughs> Again. <laughs> We're gonna start by removing all the wood off the soffit area. We need to double up the two by 12s. Right now we have one two by 12 right here. We need to double it up, so we're gonna take the insulation out. We're gonna run the two by 12 from down bottom all the way up to the top on both sides. And that's why we didn't close this bottom area out because we gotta pull this portion out, build it up, two by 12 goes in. And the reason why we're beefing all of it up, we're gonna have the new addition but up to this portion of the A-frame and a vertical wall is gonna sit on this roof right here that goes up. That's gonna be the front side of the addition. You're gonna see it from the front side, but it needs to sit on something. It has to sit on this, so we're doubling it up. Remember the goal is to survive this bill and then take a vacation. That's my plan. <laughs> This show Shugibon, it really did last very, very well. I mean, for not having been touched in 
five years? No, uh, probably four years. You think it was four years? It's done well. Like it looks beautiful. It looks just like when we first did it. It still got like all the colors and the shine to it. Yeah, that's great. I'm impressed. Are you? Yeah, it takes a lot of work at first, but then you don't have all the upkeep. You steal it and you forget about it. Yeah. Nice. You don't forget about the pain it took to <laughs> make it happen though. I went there, I was at work most of the time. So. <laughs> we need to remove the two by fours that we used as nailers for the soffit boards. And then we also need to remove all of the insulation and the baffles. And the thought process behind doing the insulation was that was going to be part of the interior of the house. Because remember, we always knew that we were going to build phase two onto the house. So we knew that this inside of the A-frame was going to stay. However, now that the house is designed and we're doing it, it's completely different. And we're gonna have to go back in and actually put more two by 12s on the inside of the existing two by 12s and therefore everything has got to go. We got the soffit all demoed out right for the new two by 12s. We're gonna double that up. The siding is officially demoed out, ready for the floor joists to come across, sit on top of this beam and tie into the house. So we're officially trying to tie the A-frame in to the addition of the new house. And this is gonna be a little tricky. Um, I think I have it in my head. I'm pretty sure I got it. I gotta look at the drawings a few more times, but uh, we're tying together. Hey, Leon, you disliked those trees so much, I bought you 10 of them. I know, come on, Lee. Come on, go in for a little bit. <laughs> I like it. You like it? Yeah. Huge, huh? Oh, yeah. You see these little white flowers? Yeah. They bloom to be humongous flowers. So these trees grow to be eight to 10 feet tall, and we are eight foot two right there. Going down to that side, you're probably 13, 14 feet up. So these things are probably gonna be perfect. So after confirming that the livestock do not like to eat skip laurels, we went ahead and we purchased 10 of them to plant along the backside of the array. Let's just put them all in a group for now. And then once dad has everything marked out, we can start putting them in the spot. Yeah. And the benefit of this is it's obviously livestock resistant. It is deer resistant. It grows very tall and like six to eight feet wide. And they have some really, really beautiful blooms in the springtime. So I think that this is probably our best option to both keep the animals out and to also keep the solar array looking somewhat decent. Tried it yesterday. What do you think? <laughs> he doesn't. See, he's sniffing them. Oh, no, he's checking it out. Now they are gonna sustain some damage, I think, because they are gonna taste them. I'm a little nervous now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Because he's wow. just going around picking and choosing what he wants to eat and what he doesn't. He's not happy. They are going to test the plants out. We saw this yesterday and we've seen it with other plants that we've tested out with the animals. So they will nibble on it, but then they kind of take a bite and they chew on it and they realize they don't like it. So, as scary as it is, Josh, <laughs> They're gonna realize they don't like it. It's kind of like when you're in the ocean and then a shark bites a person, they realize they don't really taste good. <laughs> I'll, I'll take some eat my pants and the shark. <laughs> so we're coming about three feet off this way. We're coming four feet off this way. And that's gonna be the spacing for our tree. And then we're gonna space each tree six feet apart. And this we roughly 60 feet. I got 10 trees. So every six feet, we have a tree. But our biggest issue is the electrical line. Where's that exactly? I have an idea. But, <laughs> so I'm gonna dig down with the skid steer and the auger, 10 inches down, maybe eight, and then dig the rest out by hand. We will mark the first spot with sheep fur. So I do one of these parts. <laughs> West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, you're about like 12 to 13 inches. Down. Okay, cool. All right, you're gonna want to be right about here. All right. We're being very careful going through here. The trench with the power line that comes from the panels that goes to the powerhouse is right in this vicinity below us. So I'm going down eight, 10 inches roughly with the uh, skid steer. We're going through and hand digging everything out just to be careful. The last thing I want to do is hit that power line. I'm fairly confident that we're gonna be clear, but always a chance. 
So we're, we're being very cautious. We're gonna make it happen, girl. Nightfall came a little bit too quickly last night. I think we were probably about an hour away from being able to finish this. About that. We have like four of the 10 N, but we decided that this morning, just to protect our investment, I guess you could say, we should probably get out the electric fencing from the barn and set up just a temporary barrier to you know, kind of let the new wear off because when something is new, they rub, they bite, they pull, they push. Yeah. Rolly pulley. Yeah. That's fun. Now on top of the left pull line. Six holes down and we haven't hit it yet. Not playing on it either. <laughs> Yeah. 